It's time to move out and you're gonna need a U-Haul. But how do you rent one? Hey, I'm Alex. And I'm Philip. And we teach you what you need to know about being an adult. Because adulting shouldn't suck. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click on the bell so you can get the notifications when we put out some new content, and the comments below let us know if you know how to drive a U-Haul or not. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to rent a U-Haul in five easy steps. We both moved a lot, and renting a U-Haul is typically the easiest way to go when you're trying to get everything moved all in one trip. They're typically pretty easy to rent, and if you're gonna be moving long distance, you can rent a U-Haul truck in one city and then drop it off at a U-Haul location in another city. How convenient is that? There are all different kinds of U-Hauls that you can rent. They have vans, regular pickup trucks, trailers to carry your car, box trailers, and a variation of different size of box trucks or a combination of all of the above so you can move whatever it is that you have to move. I've rented almost everything U-Haul has at some point in my life. I do have to say that towing your car across the country behind a huge box truck absolutely sucks. Mm. I did it back when I was 21 when I moved to Las Vegas for college, but I guess most stuff isn't that scary to drive since we both drove tanks in the army. Yeah. But even my wife, who's like five foot nothing, can drive one of those big U-Haul trucks like a pro. In order to rent a truck from U-Haul, you have to be at least 18 years old. But if you're renting a U-Haul truck through a third party company, they might have their own rules and require the driving age to be higher, sometimes 21 or older. Obviously, the driver of the vehicle is gonna have to have a valid driver's license and they'll also have the driver of the vehicle have some sort of secondary piece of ID, like a debit card that's in their name or a credit card. And then if you do meet these requirements to rent a U-Haul, that's when it's time to go to step one of getting a U-Haul. Step one is figuring out what size vehicle you need and if you need any other equipment, like moving blankets, boxes, dollies for moving large items. This is an important step because not every rental location is gonna have all the equipment available. So additionally, you don't want to rent a 26 foot truck if you only have a few things to move. They say that a 10 foot truck will fit like a studio apartment with the stuff in it, while a 26 foot truck will fit four fully furnished bedrooms or more. I guess that all really depends on how much crap you have, right? Like, are you a minimalist or are you a hoarder? Step two is select your pickup and drop off dates and locations, and then reserve the vehicle and the equipment that you need. To do this, all you need to do is call your nearest rental facility. You can do this by going to Google and searching up U-Haul near me or by going to uhaul.com. If you want, you can also reserve from their website at uhaul.com. This is also the time that you wanna add any additional drivers if you have any. You're typically gonna have to pay a fee to add these extra drivers, but if you're moving with roommates or a girlfriend or a boyfriend, somebody that you'll be sharing the driving responsibilities with, it's important that you add them because if you were to get into an accident and they were driving the vehicle and they're not listed as a driver, it could void any insurance that the vehicle might have. During the reservation process, they might ask you about additional insurance for the truck. This isn't a bad idea to get it because most of the time your auto insurance for your personal vehicle isn't gonna cover any damages that might happen to the truck while you're in possession of it. If you choose to decline the additional coverage and you damage the vehicle, you could be held liable for the cost personally. I always pay for their insurance because years ago, I was helping one of my best friends move and he was moving in the apartment complex and he wasn't paying attention while he's backing out and he hit the passenger side mirror on a pillar and I was sitting there. And you think, you know, it's broken the mirror off, right? No, those things are built solid. It literally peeled the passenger side door open like a tuna can and the freaking window exploded all over me. I remember just dying laughing hysterically at how stupid he was for doing that, but luckily for him, he paid for the insurance and he didn't have to pay anything out of pocket for the accident. And ever since then, I've always spent the extra money and bought the insurance. And my wife always says, you don't need it, blah, blah, blah. But based on that experience, I'm like, hell yeah, I need it. And thankfully, I've never actually needed it, but I think with that, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. It's only like, what, 20 bucks, 25 bucks? Yeah, no, it's cheap. So for the peace of mind that it gives you when you're driving this vehicle, like you might as well just pay it because it is probably a bigger vehicle than you're used to driving. So you're probably not gonna be as good as it as you would be driving your regular car. Right, so spend the 20 bucks right. or whatever it is. Step three is picking up the vehicle. 
They're gonna take a copy of your driver's license and take your payment in the form of a deposit. They won't fully charge you for the vehicle until you return it. When you pick up the vehicle, they're gonna go over the user agreement for the vehicle and tell you all the do's and don'ts while you're operating the vehicle. When they show you the vehicle, they should do a vehicle inspection with you. This is where you and an employee are gonna walk around the vehicle and list any damages that were done to the vehicle before you took possession of it. They're also gonna record the mileage of the vehicle and its fuel level before they give you the keys. It's important to be thorough with this walkthrough because like we had said earlier, you're liable for the damages of the vehicle while it's in your possession. So if you miss anything and they claim that you did it after you turn it in, you're held liable. Yep. Pro tip, take a picture of the odometer when you're doing the walkthrough. Make sure you can see the fuel gauge in the picture when you take it. You have to return the vehicle with the exact same amount of fuel that it had in it when they gave it to you. And like we said, they record the fuel level on their piece of paper, but you don't always get that. So just in case you forget how much fuel it had when you got it, or if they recorded the fuel level incorrectly, having a picture of the fuel level gauge with the odometer will help you remember what the fuel level was when you got it. And I'm saying this because the one time I didn't do this, I forgot the vehicle had three quarters of a tank of gas when I picked it up. And of course, when I returned it, I filled it all the way up. And those gas tanks are freaking huge. So I literally did wasted money by not taking a picture of the gas gauge the day before, or the day that I rented it. So don't be like me. Step four is returning the truck. Hopefully your move was a success and nothing happened to you, the vehicle, or the equipment. You're gonna wanna make sure that you return the truck with the same amount of fuel as it had and when you picked it up, and then you're gonna drop it off at whatever location you had designated when you originally reserved the U-Haul. Step five is paying for the truck. U-Haul charges you a flat rate to rent whatever vehicle and equipment that you need, plus whatever rate they charge per mile driven while you had the vehicle. They're also gonna charge you for the fuel if you didn't return it with the same amount that you had when you picked it up. And they're typically gonna charge way more than whatever you'd pay at the pump. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more expensive yeah, it's to like not six dollars or something crazy. Unless you live in California, it's like ten dollars. Mm -hmm. During this time, they're also gonna walk around the vehicle with you because they wanna make sure that there was no additional damages done to the vehicle while it was in your possession. If there was damage done to the vehicle and you had the additional insurance coverage, then no worries to you, it's covered and they'll take care of it. However, if you did damage to the vehicle and you didn't get any additional coverage, they could charge you for the damages done to the vehicle. Sucks to suck. Mm -hmm. So like we said earlier, U-Hauls can be great if you're trying to move all your stuff all at once and you don't have access to any other vehicles and you don't have a bunch of buddies with trucks. We both used U-Hauls before and the process to rent them and return them is pretty easy. It's convenient as long as you take care of the vehicle and you return it in the same condition that you received it in. If you guys like this video and you guys want to watch more videos like this, make sure you check out our next video, Moving Out of State.